Hi everybody, so today's video is all about boots and bags, two of the most important things you can have and take with you on the trek and can really make and break the whole trip for you. I'm joined by Kerry who works in our ops team uh, but previously had years and decades of experience within uh, working for companies like Cotswolds and uh, you're a mountain instructor, Ma mountain leader. Yeah. Mountain leader, excellent. Yeah. So you are very knowledgeable and very experienced with all this. So um, yeah, what we're going to do is just just start off talking about shoes and boots and footwear. So shoes versus boots, what's best and why? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that question. Um, so basically, for a trip like Everest Base Camp. Um, boots are 100% the way to go. Um, the reason for that is, you know, uneven, un uneven terrain, not necessarily technically underfoot, but you need something that's going to support your feet, support your ankles. Um, nothing is too flexible um, because excessive foot movement can cause um, fit, foot fatigue. And obviously, if it's a multi-day trip, um, you're going to be on your feet every day for seven or so hours yeah, potentially yeah. um and the last thing you need is tired feet achy feet blisters yeah so yeah <laughs> Def <laughs> definitely boots <laughs> yeah exactly. i don't want to get blisters no. no um so when i'm looking at boots what should i be looking for um because I, I might have some at home i'm looking at going like these boots are they fit for purpose but equally i might go to a shop or online and i'm like what do i need to look for when buying a pair of boots or assessing my own boots so predominantly uh you want something that fits <laughs> you'll be surprised uh how many people can uh, get that wrong unfortunately <laughs> um but in terms of the boots like the ones we have here um they need to have full ankle support um you can get boots which are classed as mid boots mm -hmm. uh, where the ankle support doesn't come up as high okay. uh, but mid boots generally tend to be lighter made from um, like fabrics rather than leather um, and they're a lot more flexible so where we were also talking about the shoes being unsuitable because they're too too light too flexible mid boots generally would be unsuitable as well because again that is too flexible so a boot like this, um, which has a full full ankle support, um, is nice and sturdy. It's still got a little bit of flex to it, but it's you know you can't bend it in half, kind of kind of scenario. Um, something like this with uh, a good a good tread, good grip, and good ankle support is is a good place to start. Well, I think you kind of started going off it. We, I've got a selection of shoes down here and boots. <laughs> I want you to kind of just assess me through these of what you, th why they're good or why they're not appropriate. So okay. Start off with Innovates. Yes. Good or bad? What do you think? Uh, are they perfect for every space camp trek? No, no, oh. no. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no offense, Innovate, but no. Um, no, so basically... Whilst they are great for certain activities, they just they don't offer enough support for multi-day trekking, carrying a pack. Um, they yeah, they're just not supportive enough. And if you want to demonstrate how flexible they are, you should not be able to bend. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be able to do that on on a on a good set of walking boots that will yeah. that will offer enough support for the type type of trip we're doing. So these are my general day to day walking shoes. Yes. That I wear every day. That's why I'm wearing Crocs right now because I can only wear these. Uh, I'm not suggesting Crocs for Everest Base Camp. Uh, no, uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> maybe for the huts. For well, maybe the huts. Lovely. Yeah. I would definitely have the huts. <laughs> so lovely scarper shoes. Good or bad? What do you think? Uh, bad, unfortunately. Okay, um, they're definitely better than the, the, the fell running shoes. But okay. again, what they have in terms of sturdiness is great, but they don't have any ankle support. So they've got a little less flex, yep. but they haven't got the support up here in case yep. on the rocky terrain. Exactly, yep. So, uh, my lovely scarves we were talking about earlier. You were Be saying these beautiful. are great, a lovely, well I used. Ha I have those particular boots I as know. well. <laughs> Love them. And uh, so they're good, you yes. said. Yeah. Why? Um, they just tick all the boxes. Uh, they're supportive. Um, you know, they're going to look after you. 
yeah, they're just gonna, they're just going to do everything you need them to do the, the, without being overkill. You yeah. know, they're, they're not too heavy. Um, they're not too stiff. They're like you know three little bears. They're like, just, they're just right. <laughs> <laughs> just right. I mean, it's solid. Yeah, got support. But think of overkill. Maybe uh, what about some. These yes. fancy, like they look very Himalayan esque. I mean, they are they are very fancy, and they are designed for trips in the Himalayas. Just yes. not every space camp. <laughs> um, no, they they weigh an absolute ton. Yes. Um, and if you could just uh, try and bend them for me. Oh, <laughs> not a chance. Yeah. So they are going to be really unforgiving on your feet um, to the point where you're they're not designed necessarily for. Okay you know weeks weeks wear at a time excellent thanks for that so next thing we want to is bags one thing i always get confused at is literage what size of literage do you think we need for our everest base camp track so as a minimum you want to about 30 liters okay so rucksacks are measured in liters because it's a size of volume so it depicts how much they can actually carry mm -hmm. Um, so obviously the higher the litre ridge, the more it can carry. It's, don't get too carried away with the size though, because generally if you buy a slightly bigger pack, because you think you might need it, you'll generally then pack stuff that you don't need. <laughs> so yeah, about 30, 35 litres is normally enough for what we would call like a, a day pack. Okay. Um, key features of a rucksack. They've all, you, uh, you go into the shop, you look around, they've all got different bells and whistles. Yes. What features do we need for this type of trek? So much like the boots, the main consideration to think about when buying a bag is that it fits. Um, and the main thing to consider when trying it on is the back length. Okay. The back length is what's going to dictate whether it fits or not. Um, some bags will come in different back lengths um, some bags have uh, a back part compartment that you can actually adjust. So obviously it's important to look at which features they have. Um, but the, the hip belt should fit, you know, around the hips. See a lot of people with it around their waist. Um, but how the bag's designed to obviously distribute weight while you're carrying it, um, it goes through your hips. So if the hip belt's not quite right, then the load's not going to be carried properly, could end up with shoulder pain, back pain, that kind of thing. Which, you know, if your boots don't fit as well, <laughs> combine it with some blisters, you're just going to have a horrible time. Well, I think <laughs> I've got a couple of them here. So this is my normal work bag. Yes. How do you feel this would fare on a trek to base Whilst couch? it's lovely. Lovely colour, I think. It is beautiful, yes. Um, if you can just spin it round for me, you can see <laughs> that there is no way of adjusting the fit of the shoulders, the back. It's got no hip belt. Um, so whilst, again, it's okay for maybe carrying around from the car <laughs> to the supermarket, that kind of thing, um, for a prolonged use over multiple days, it's, it's not going to cut it, I'm afraid. Okay, so the next one we've got here. Yep. Um, is my standard Osprey sort of bag. Yep. Uh, what do you think of this one then? Again, I think this, this ticks a lot of boxes. Um, it's got adjustable shoulders. This is the adjustable uh, back that I was talking about, which is Velcroed in. So these will actually move up and down okay. if you need them to. Um, and obviously you've got a nice padded hip belt there with what I call Snack pockets. I don't <laughs> yes, know. If yeah, that, I got, don't know if that's technical. The technical term. In fact, you know. I think in, in in mine. Yes, I've got Kendall mint cake. Excellent. See, there you so, go. Perfect, <laughs> perfect demonstration of their use. So it's, it's kind of little features like that that you, you think of. Like, when would I need? It's nice having the belt, but actually, a little snack pocket as well. It's yep. Quickly on the trail. Absolutely. Eats a jelly baby. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I quite like it. It's got lots of little pockets, and it's a good size. I don't know what size literage this is. 44. 44, you know, obviously. Um, it's a 44 litre, so that's about the right size, kind of the top end of what we're. Yeah, yeah, between yeah, 30, 35, 40. And yeah. this one's similar sort of size, I think. Um, but what do you think of this bag? Again, it's, it's a great bag. Uh, it's got all the features that we're looking for. So it's got a, a hip belt. Um, it's got an uh, adjustable back. Yep, it's got an adjustable back system there. It's also got yeah. a nice bit of ventilation. 
But I get, um, I get very sweaty, so this is quite nice, lovely. this bag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're, they're all things um, to be considered. But again, the, the, main, the main thing to think of is, is the fit. Yeah, um, And a good outdoor shop will, will, let, will help you do that. I suppose that's my last kind of thing with, with all this is, uh, you know, with boots and bags, online versus shop. What are your thoughts? Is it, is it all right just to kind of crack online or do you think it's worth going to a shop or? <laughs> well, as someone that used to work in a shop, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, buying online has its place, yeah. absolutely. But if you've never had walking boots before, or, you know, the last pair of boots you bought was like 10 years ago, mm. or whatever. Um, going into a shop, having your feet measured um, and getting the boots fitted properly is, is going to save you so much agony. Excellent. And well, same with the bags. Yes, yeah. Well, thanks so much, Kerry. It's been really interesting and Welcome. going through it. Um, I hope you guys have all found it informative. If you've got any questions, do give us a call. Even if you call through to the sales team, uh, we can put you through to Kerry to talk about bits and pieces. But thank you so much, Kerry, and um, thank you guys for watching. Bye.